All right, Hawkins here with the Chicken Hawk Farmstead, and today I wanted to go over a quick little update on our little flood and drain aquaponics. This is the IBC tote chop and drop, and our aquaponics slash wicking bed system. Uh, this was built last year, so uh, it was put a lot of work into it building it. But this year, it was just drop my starts in. And I'm done. Uh, I wanted to go ahead and do this. This is, let's see, it's May 30th. So, here in the next couple weeks, this is going to start blowing up, I, th I believe. Pretty good. So, before it got too out of control, I wanted to go over it. Uh, and this, just by happen chance, it's like this. Uh, we got some different examples of wicking beds and some of the progressions I made. This is actually one of the designs I first started out with when I started playing with wicking beds. Uh, from about the top of the K and the Royal King or whatever down is lava rock and there from and up is uh, soil with some weed mat in there and I would use that and I primed it or whatever and then fill it from the, down the tube and actually I think I videos most of these uh, here's a more simple design I still use I'm using this for uh, some comfrey cuttings Got that just as simple as putting your pot, you know, with it's got holes in it in the bottom, put it in a bowl or a container to hold water. That way it keeps keeps it moist and keeps it wicking up. So there's a couple of them. Uh, this is one of my older older ones. And you can see here, this used to be where I had the water flowing in, the intake, and my overflow. And now I just have it sitting here. And when it, it fills up, it'll flow out of there so it doesn't fill up too much. Sitting out, and the bottom portion of that is does have lava rock in it as well. And this thing actually came in really handy. I just took some grape cuttings uh, last year and stuck in here. No rooting hormone or nothing, just stuck them in, see what would happen. You can see now I got, there's one, two, and this one got hit by the frost pretty bad. But three three grapevines so probably this fall off i'm gonna pull those out of there and uh put them where i want them so that's nice uh now these beds here we have peppers we have tomatoes i have some eggplant uh some of my, i started a lot of my stuff this year but it got uh killed off we had a really late freeze not frost but freeze had everything covered and it still all died so I had to go end up having to go buy stuff anyways and then we got this little uh what's it like a scorpion pepper that's pretty nice but just want to kind of show the size of these and this tomato I, it was already pr pretty well long this thing's probably tripled in size since I planted it last week it was last week that's cucumber there got more peppers tomato and there's cherry tomatoes Got more peppers. These are jalapenos. These should be bell peppers. And then I even throw in um, sweet potato. Because you can eat the leaves on the sweet potato. So there's a benefit there. And it, believe it or not, even though it's a wicking bed and it's only got like four or five inches of soil, there was quite a few tubers under one of my sweet potatoes last year. So that was kind of neat. Uh, more cucumber there. We got more peppers. Another um, tomato. I don't know why I'm having some trouble saying tomato. Uh, this bed here is gonna is my strawberry bed. Is this one? That's what it's gonna be full of. And my plan is these are gonna send out their little runners and make more and more. And then I'll, oh, look, I fell off somehow. Yeah, we already got a couple of these strawberries off of there this year. But as these get runners on them, where I can go through and divide them. And then I can move them other places throughout the property. But that will be just one big strawberry bit, patch, basically, just full. And then uh, I'll I usually keep a ladder, or not a ladder, a um, little scaffolding thing. It's like a foot and a half tall. And the kids can actually come up and they'll get strawberries out that they want. Uh, this here, this used to be a flood and drain bed. Like a, yeah, flood and drain. But as you can see, it's just a flow through bed now. Because there's, I put mint in here. Don't ever put mint in a flood and drain bed. It's a terrible idea. So, it took over something crazy. Oh, man, that, that mint smells delicious. 
yeah you can see it's nice and nice and good if you know what this is let me know i don't know what it is but i had this one grow, come up pop up here now i got one down there last year i had a uh, sweet basil there and that's definitely not sweet basil so but it's pretty so we left it uh these are some trees that keep growing in all of our stuff but throw those out you can see there's another yeah there's some i said a whole lot of uh mint in this thing there's not really much of a whoops well didn't mean for that to happen it got all clogged up and the flood and drain didn't work anymore so uh we had quite a few fish make it through the winter i threw one of the what you call this in here a little like stock tank heater and pretty much all my goldfish made it and then but i wanted more so we went and got another 50 this year and threw another 50 in there not very good success with those so far for some reason they uh been dying quite a bit uh, i don't know what the deal is because the other ones have been here just fine and then a lot of the new ones though haven't been making it and here's our flood and drain. It's not running like a typical flood and drain right now, though, because I have it run the pump running 15 on, 15 off, 15 on, 15 off. Just kind of save the pump a little bit and see if it's going to work out. And uh, so it fills it up, and then uh, the bell siphon hits, which will drain it down. It continues to flow for another few minutes, uh, you know, however long it takes and then it drains the bed out so it's still a flood and drain bed and down here if you saw my other video where uh, i did a little bucket thing it's gonna help protect the pump and that's actually working great right now and then i added that sprayer bar which is working awesome too because it was just flowing the water was just flowing back in there and now we're getting a lot of the agitation and spray it's kind of full there is actually more uh, holes down that thing, but I just topped this off so And I don't think we're gonna be able to see any of the fish in there. But we got three or four big, you know, real good sized bass and some uh, Bluegill in there Yeah, so they're doing good and here we got sweet potato Just because I had more I had a bought a pack of sweet potato slips. So I got a bunch more peppers uh, Carrots don't know where the carrots came from we got carrots in here you see there's more of those little things uh cabbage and it's actually looking really good it's it's come up nice and big and uh this is cabbage that i started myself because when we had that freeze it was established enough that it didn't kill it so that was pretty cool uh that's some other stuff i got out late i don't think it's gonna make it but it might we'll see i need more plant material in here to help as a filter so then we got some onion that are down there, and then a bunch of just random weeds. The good thing is, like, these little trees that come out everywhere, I can just pull them straight out and they're done. I need to see if these are worth anything. Maybe I can sell them. I doubt it. But uh, that's it for now for a little update on the Wiccan bed setup and the little aquaponic setup. Like I said, that thing's working really good. Uh, when I go to the pond and go fishing, I can bring them up here and keep them alive till we want to eat them. And then, like I said, these are looking good so far. I need something. I need to start planting more in there. So when those die off in the heat, I got more fish are looking good. I mean, so far this year, the systems, everything's working good on the system. I still need to take that pump and do what I did with the other pump. So I'll take it and I'll get a smaller probably a small little bucket or whatever to put it in and surround it by lava rock because uh it is sucking up a few fish for some reason i i don't know what that's about but i'll find a few fish in there stuck to it everything then so i gotta unplug it and reset it you can see we got a little i think it's a lily or something like that i can't remember you can see the roots have actually taken off this year and hopefully they'll pop up and do good but there's our little fish and they are pretty nice. They'll come up and nibble on your fingers and stuff, so. They're fun, but that's what we got going on so far this year. Uh, I'll probably do an update in 
two weeks to a month. And, you know, the tomatoes and the cucumbers and all that. So it's this. Hopefully this will be covered. Uh, this is south facing, so we get a lot of our sun from there. But hopefully by the time that happens, you know, if this is covered, because uh, the pepper's going to need plenty. Hopefully we'll still get enough, because I said that south. That's south. So the sun rises over here, so we'll get that morning sun. And then we'll still get plenty of evening sun. And it's not till about 7 or 8 o'clock before the building gets in the way over there. So, Oh, and one more quick thing. To keep these two tanks topped off until I do get them bound together. Because eventually I want to get that, that one running the whole system. So it'll come in here and then it'll flow back down to the other one. But I have this hose that's hooked up to rain catchment. That's got a 250 gallon tank on the other side. Coming off this roof. And then I have this barrel here. It's got another, uh, you know, it holds a 55 gallon drum. So it holds water, and I can use it to top these two tanks off if they get low. I might eventually put a float valve connected to that one into these. But we'll see. It's more for the future. That's it for the update right now. Uh, yeah, don't forget to like the video. Stay tuned for updates, and we'll see how this thing goes. Like I said, we're in year two, and I got a pretty good feeling this thing's probably, I think we'll get a good. At least five or ten years out of these totes so all right we'll be back later